Are you just guessing when you serve as to where the ideal contact point is? The place in your serve where you can generate the optimal power and control? In today's lesson, I'm gonna reveal the exact place where you'd like to place the ball to get your serve to have the most performance every single time. Hi, this is John Craig with Performance Plus Tennis, known in the internet space as the Serve Builder. And in today's lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to find the ideal contact point in your serve in three easy steps. The first step is to understand exactly where the ideal contact point is. And like most other things on the serve, there are different theories and ideas. And what I want you to do is understand that there's one central place where that ideal contact point is. There are some variations and there are reasons for those variations, but we're gonna get right into where the ideal spot is that most high performance players are trying to make contact on their serve most of the time. So you wanna be making contact between the shoulder and the ear, right in here, more at 12 o'clock. It's more of a 12 o'clock than it is a one o'clock. Okay, at one o'clock, you really aren't gonna be able to get the shoulder power on the serve that you'd like. So a lot of coaches will teach one o'clock to try to produce a slice serve, to teach the student how to play a slice. But ultimately, once you understand how to play a slice, you should really abandon that contact point. That's just a training device, really. So, and I'll show you one other reason too, this is interesting, is that if I go out to one o'clock and I'm on this angle, if I straighten out my shoulders so that they're horizontal, I'm literally almost throwing sidearm. So a one o'clock contact point in a, in a good serve, in a good serve position, is actually almost a sidearm motion if you were horizontal throwing. So how many of us can really throw sidearm harder or with more power and control than we can throw over the top? So it's definitely not the place we want to be. So ideally, between the shoulder and the ear, and you can see that the racket is inside the hand. We do not want to try to make contact with the racket directly above the hand because the intention or attempt to get there is going to weaken the motion. So we don't want to have, we don't want to overstretch, okay? Oftentimes your coaches say, stretch up as high as you can go, as high as you can, really reach, reach, reach. But if you reach beyond the point where your shoulder can comfortably rotate through, then you're just going to absorb all the power out of your swing and even potentially create an injury. So I do contact it once again from the back, whether you're hitting a flatter serve or you're hitting a topspin serve or even a slice serve, is going to be more inside the shoulder, between the shoulder and the ear, and the racket is not going to be above the hand. It's going to be slightly inside the hand. And from a side view, and this can vary a lot depending on your height and your serving style and a lot of factors, but we want to get that, that contact point so it's out in front of us slightly. So we're leaning in. And you can see that my playing arm has moved into a position where it's quite powerful at the top. And it's leaning in on a slight angle. And that would be the ideal position to make contact from a side view. If I get further out in front, if I get too far out in front, now I can no longer actively rotate my shoulder to generate that racket head speed. I'd get out too far. And of course, if I'm behind, well, that's not gonna work either for obvious reasons. I really deplete the swing of power at that point. So that is the ideal contact point that ultimately you wanna achieve for all of your serves. And step two is practicing the skill of placing the ball into the ideal contact point. So what I love for my students to do is really set up like they're gonna serve and do their routine, get set, place the ball, and then use the non-dominant hand as a guideline for their ball toss accuracy. So for me, I knew immediately when that ball began to descend to my left hand that that ball was playable. So it really helps me set up to see that the ball is indeed going to be in the spot I'd like. And my left hand rises right into that slot, right there. So if my hand, left hand moves away, my right hand moves right into that area, and there's my contact point. So when you're practicing, it's another thing that we want to avoid doing that a lot of players will do is they'll go like this and they'll toss the ball and they'll go, oops, I gotta go catch that ball. And what I prefer that you, you do is just let the ball go and go to your trophy position. If the ball isn't coming back to the hand, it isn't coming back to the hand. So practice getting into your trophy position and keep working on the skill of getting that ball to come back to your hand. So that then you just see it right there and you can play it. And that's really gonna help you build the skill. This is kind of where the serve either goes right or goes wrong. If you get into a really good balance, which we covered in last week's video, the trophy position, 
and you place the ball into the left hand, or for me, the left hand, being a right-handed player, that is the setup that's gonna allow me to play the second half of the serve with power and control. So now that we've identified the ideal contact point, what you can do is practice the movement and stall on contact. So I oftentimes have my students do all these movements like the routine and start, and they actually simulate all the movement, and then I get them to feel the swing into contact. And I get them to feel the coordination of that movement over and over again until they really start to feel how that movement moves from trophy position to contact naturally and comfortably. And the reason why I stall there is because the motion is really a vertical motion. So it's comfortable for me to stall in that position, okay? And then I, of course, we're not gonna stall there when we hit the serve, but that's a good place to feel like you swing with control to the contact, you've got good balance, and you're able to identify that swing coming right through what I call the slot of power. Right through here is the slot of power that you're trying to get. So you can practice that movement. And then of course, next, if we wanna play the ball, we've gotta to learn to play the ball into the swing. And this is where many players go wrong because if I place the ball poorly, what we most of us do is we, we adjust. We, we don't commit to a trophy position and we adjust to hit a ball. And yes, I got it in, but I don't know if that's a very good serve or not. So what we wanna do is not chase the ball and modify your swing but instead stick to the swing that you want and miss the ball. So in this example, I'll place the toss up, deliberately not in the ideal place, but I'll swing through the slot that I'd like, okay? So the key here is to not modify the swing to hit the ball, but learn to place the ball inside of a perfect swing. So maybe I'll get a little closer this time and get that ball a little bit closer, but nope, still not there. Hmm. So I'm getting a lot of practice here, quality practice with my swing, even though the ball is not there yet. And just keep building this skill so you get in the habit of missing the ball, okay, until it is placed perfectly into your swing. And when it finally is, just swing naturally and hit the ball. And that way you'll feel like you don't modify your swing at all and you just play through the ball that's placed perfectly into your swing. And it takes a lot of discipline to do that, to not hit those poor tosses, but that's how you're really gonna get the discipline to not hit those poor tosses when you're playing as well. I hope you really enjoyed and will benefit from today's lesson. Also, please check out our playlist here on the YouTube channel to get a greater understanding of all the ingredients that go into having a professional quality serve. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel and click on the link below to gain access to our free library lessons on our website that reveal all the fundamental principles you need to master to achieve your full potential in tennis. Thanks again for watching today's video, and we'll see you in the next lesson.